Hello and welcome back to this tutorial on using Renderman and a physically plausible lighting scheme or lighting methods uh, using Renderman 4.0. Now apologies for taking so long to come up with the second part of this tutorial. I um, was intending to do it this morning. Unfortunately somebody else was actually intending to use heavy machinery outside my window so I couldn't actually record. Um, so we got about this far this morning and it's looking okay but we still need to finish just getting the physically plausible um, shaded materials onto the rest of the box and fix up a couple of things with it before we get into some of the details of working with these shaders and making things look prettier and more interesting because that's where we're going to take this eventually. It's not just going to look exactly the way it looked before. We're going to have a much better and more interesting result. So bear with me. This tutorial will basically lead you through the rest of the way to getting the box set up with the RMS GPS Renderman um, Studio General Purpose Shader. So first thing I want to do is I've got this light here which I just put in here to use my replace object and it's giving me a strange artifact here so I don't want it. Let's get rid of that. Don't need that. First thing I can do. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to actually start replacing some of these sides here. Now this side is already replaced. I'm just going to make sure that it's named correctly and I've named it box side. I'm going to replace this one. Okay. And I'm going to call this box front. Always good practice to keep things named so we actually know where they are, know what's going on. So let's just maximize our viewport here. And I want to get my hypershade up here. Okay, so hypershade. So with this material, which is my box front, I'm thinking that I want to have the box front, which is probably this one here, file six. And a middle mouse drag and drop onto the little checkerboard pattern there and it's showing up but still a little bit blurry so in my hardware texturing sometimes it just needs to be reminded what it is and we get to there okay cool so at the front the side let's go to the top again a new rms gps and i'm going to call the top and okay well, let's just make sure it's still selected yep and top is there um, we need the top, which is this texture here, and let's drag it and drop it into, oops, let me make sure we can actually see where it is. Okay, so it's just up here, RMS, GPS, surface color, and again, it needs to be just tweaked sometimes to get it looking better, surface color, and we get it sharp. Okay, now I want to do the, the back and the um, the other side as well, so we'll do this. What I want to do though is make sure I keep my, my camera position here, I'm reasonably happy with it, so... I'm going to go to bookmarks, edit bookmarks, and I'm going to call this one marks camera. Okay, and new bookmark, marks camera, rename this. Bear with me. Okay, so that's applied, that's it there. And I'm going to add it to my shelf. It's a second one along here. I had actually created one before. Let's just get that one and delete that. So this new one here, no matter where I go, I can get my position back where I want it. Just, it's another handy thing to have on your shelf when you're working. Get rid of these when you want to, but the replace object and the um, bookmark, very handy to have. Okay, so let's just orbit around here a bit. Get around to the back of the object. Okay, so it's the back and the other side. This will be another render man. It's going to be back. And I'm going to put the back on it, which I'm thinking is this file here. Again, bear with me. Just need to pull it up here and get around here. Okay, it'll be visible, but blurry until I just shock it into its correct format. And let's move around to here. So this is the other side. Okay. I'm call this side two. Or, mm, unseen side, maybe. Something so I can recognize it. And I'm thinking it's this texture here. Okay. Okay. Now, shock that back into reality. Let's go back to our original view. 
Now, what's going to happen when I render this? Any guesses? Let's see. If you were following along before, you will have seen I did something with the texture on this side. Okay, so the texture on this side is looking a little bit washed out and sad for itself. And the texture on the top is also looking sad for itself. I haven't looked at the texture around the edge at all yet because that's just a um, color swatch. Now, why is this texture looking sad for itself and washed out? The reason is that it's coming in as, first of all, it's been filtered. I don't want to have filtered. Okay. The second thing is I want to actually tell it that the source image is sRGB. So it's bringing in sRGB image and then it's trying to actually, or it needs to, convert it into linear and then convert it back. Now there are some tutorials on the Renderman site, which you can have a look at about linear workflows. I'll point, point them at you in a, a little bit, um, which will explain why this works. Now let's have a look at the difference in the rendering here. much nicer. We can see we're actually getting a really, really nice, richer color to this. Now just bear with me one second, I'm just going to pause and I'm going to find that tutorial pointed out to you on the roundabout site. Okay, and we're back recording. So this is the um, tutorial on roundabout site which I'd advise you to look for. It's linear workflow. Now I will admit what I'm doing here is kind of the old school method of working with a linear workflow. But it's basically to get people to understand what's happening. Each texture, when it's saved as a texture map, is saved in sRGB format. Okay. When we bring it into Maya, for it to work well with other things, we really need to actually get it to be in a linear format, which means, okay, sRGB is down here, linear is here, and we need to get another output curve for it afterwards. So this tutorial goes through how to do that. I'll go back into Maya and just sort out the rest of these textures, just to get us up to where we're going. Now, the next time I do this, I'll show you the simpler way, which is new for Renderman Studio 4. Much simpler, but we'll go through the pain first, because I've gone through the pain for a long time. Um, you're going to have to suffer with me for a couple of minutes. It'll only take a couple of minutes to do. So let's just have a look. So the material here at the top, um, let's go into this, and we're going to put in, turn off our filtering, and make sure the input is sRGB. Let's just go to our materials here. And I'm going to actually delete unused nodes. So I'm going to go up here, edit, delete unused nodes. Still a lot of nodes being used here. So top. Let's go to the side. That's OK. That's been figured out. This is the back. I need to go in here and turn off the filtering. Okay, and make sure we have the input profile, which is sRGB. Same here. So turn off the filtering, input profile, sRGB. Okay, now there is a plane at the bottom there, which I'm not going to worry about at all, because I'm slack like that sometimes. Okay, let's go back to what our original view was here. Bookmark's very handy for that. Let's give it a quick render shouldn't look that different. The top will actually be a little bit more saturated now because we've corrected the input image for that. Okay, and you can see indeed the top has some more saturation. Now we still have one further element here which we need to work on. In actual fact, because it's working with NURBS, we have these four separate surfaces which make up the edge of the object. Let's just have a look, inspect one of these. Okay, so inspecting this, currently called box blue and it's a blue color and just selecting this so it actually comes into our swatch history our color history is going to be there so when I actually select all of these I'll just select one two and I'll zoom around a little bit sometimes a bit tricky to find okay holding down shift and selecting all of them okay now I'm going to put on a general purpose shader and the color swatch will have been retained here. So put that color swatch in there. Excellent, you might think. That should be it all done and dusted. Well, let's have a look. What I'm going to do now is re-render. Okay, let's just see what's happened to my it window. I've lost my always on top here. Turn it to always on top. Sure, always on 
desktop. Okay, re-render. And let's see. We should notice there is quite a discrepancy in the color between these two here. The reason is the display in Maya of this color. The swatch which is being taken. We're not actually taking into account linear, linear workspace here. So what we need to do is we need to actually drop a gamma correction onto this node, onto the color node. Okay, this will actually get us back to the correct color. Now, the gamma output curve is 2.2. I know that because I've looked at it several times. So the inverse of that is 0.4545. And how do we go about getting what we want? Right, we've got to go and create a node. And we're going to create a gamma. So I'm going into the create over here and GA... M M A should find it. Let me just go into. I need to be in utilities. Let me see where I am here. Okay. I just let's input and output this to clear the rest of them. Clear the graph. Okay. So I want to go to utilities and I want to find a gamma. Let's drag this out here. Gamma correct. Okay. So I've got a gamma correct node here. What we have to do now, basically, is drag this gamma connect, gamma correct, middle mouse drag, onto the color swatch. Now, the gamma correct node is going to be linked in here, as you can see it is. So we need to give the color, which is the original color, okay, and the gamma has to be 0.4545. I'll just copy this, Control C. Control V, Control V. Okay. Now when I render this, fingers crossed, everything should look hunky dory, good to go. Watch it at the moment, re render. And we should see that we're getting that nice rich blue color throughout, which we are. So, what we've done in this lesson is we've completed setting up most of the shaders that we're going to be needing. We still need to work a lot more. I want to actually make things a bit shinier, I want to make it a bit more interesting, I want to have some texture perhaps on the teapot. One thing which I'll just finish up here, which I should do, is I'm going to put a sub-dib, sub-d scheme on all of these objects. So let's have a look here. Can be done on mass, just can't recall what, how at the moment. So what I'm going to do here is, with the object selected, go attributes, renderman, sub-dib scheme, do the same here. Attributes, Renderman, Subdiv Scheme. Again, this is doing things the long way around. I do realize that, and I apologize to people that know the way around things better than I do. So, Subdiv Scheme and Subdiv Scheme. Subdiv Scheme. Okay. So, now we'll see when we render. We won't begin with the kind of tessellation which we have here. So, let's just do a quick re render. And yes, we're getting a nice smooth plastic look. So let's have a look at some of the images which we worked at, worked through here. So this is my, my catalog. This is where we started here. Okay. We made sure that we're actually getting the linear workflow and gamma correction for the colors. You can see this working through to the top, putting on the textures around the side of this lid here, still ungamma corrected. And with gamma correction, it is looking correct. Last thing I did was getting rid of the tessellation down here by adding a subdiv scheme. Okay, so we're now in a good state which we can take this scene and start playing with it. Hopefully this has been useful to you in terms of basic understanding of setting up materials and transferring between old versions of Renderman and current versions of Renderman and also a little bit of linear lighting, the linear lighting workflow, which is critical to any kind of physically plausible lighting schemes. And I will be back with more um, probably tomorrow evening. So thank you very much for your time.